Awesome. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, all right. Welcome to training, guys. Uh, we've got Tessa here. Tessa's uh, been one of our students for a long time now, and uh, she's really skilled with the Merchant Fulfilled, the FBM. And uh, what I wanted to have her come on here and talk to you guys, you know, not only for inspiration, but also to kind of share, you know, some tips and tricks that uh, has been working for her. And uh, Tessa's generously agreed to share her time here. So uh, Tessa, uh, first off, you know, congratulations on hitting the 30K club. Show off that mug. There you go. All right, guys. So when you hit 30K and, you know, and you're inside the mastermind, you get one of these mugs just like Tessa did. It shows, hey, I did it. You know, it's a milestone. So, you know, Tessa, for her, next goal is, what did you say, double that? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> So that's the next goal for her. But for a lot of people watching, you know, just to get to that ten thousand a month, the thirty thousand dollars a month is a good goal. So um, Tessa, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it up to you know questions and answers and stuff like that. And you probably have some things in mind that you wanted to train on. Um, you know, feel free to share on that. Um, but uh, first off, let me just ask you: like, um, uh, do you have any thoughts on you know getting to where you are now and and how you got here? Okay, so <laughs> the road is not easy. <laughs> so, because um, a while back I was still working full time, and uh, it's it's really hard when you have full time job, and then basically the, this um, Amazon is also full time. So sometimes I really I go to sleep like eleven, not eleven, but twelve, one, two o'clock. You know, just so I can. I can do what I have to do. So uh, I, I'm, I'm a teacher, I'm a special ed teacher. And uh, fortunately at the end of this school year, last school year, I decided that I don't wanna go back anymore and I just will uh, focus on my FBA, my Amazon business, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's exciting. So. Yeah, I mean, that's the truth of it, right? You know, everybody says it's easy, but it's not easy. But regardless of the fact, I mean, you're showing that it's possible and that you're doing it and that's an inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's doable, you know? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, so, and what's cool about it, you know, is, is that, you know, basically you um, let go of your job, right? So now you just do this full time? Yes. Yeah. 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 So you get to set your own hours now. Yeah, and I'm I'm really enjoying it because you know I realize if you really want to scale, um, you have to do a lot of things. And now, yes, and then one of them I do a lot of fulfillment by merchant. Yes. I well I actually started with that. Um, cause I started selling on eBay, but mostly on my personal things, you know, the used items that I'm selling. So it's kind of like that's, you know, that came, um, part of my FBM. Uh, and then when I was, uh, about to send something, um, items in Amazon, and I, uh, what you call it, I, um, I did it on uh, Scoutify. And then the Scoutify said, I can send it. But then when I'm home, I actually cannot send it. So I, because, you know, something happened. Mine was because it's hazmat. So I have like a perfume, I have like, a, and then it's hazmat. So I thought, okay, well, I can still send it. I can still sell it, but I have to fulfill it myself. And I tell you, and then COVID came and I was, I actually hit a, a good, um, the golden goose, so to speak. Yeah, I was like, I didn't know, like I was selling like a hundred a day or something. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. great, that's exciting. So yeah, I, I'm curious about that because I was, I was just talking to a student the other day you know, somebody who's uh, brand new. And you know, what, what I hear from a lot of sellers is, oh man, I can't sell anything. Like everything's gated, you know, or everything's restricted. So 
how do you, you know, deal with that? And how did you get around all that? Well, first of all, I know it's frustrating. It's really frustrating to, you know, look for a product and everything is gated. Because remember, I, if you remember, Matt, I only started this. So I set up my business in Feb, um, late Feb. And then March, you know, I put like two items in um, in Amazon. So I, I didn't I didn't start like a, you know I really start from zero, and then I I look for product every week, you know, make sure that I have something, and I put you know one or two items, and then here comes COVID. It's like oh my god you know and yeah and the, for me the covid is kind of like a blessing in disguise because nobody can go out but you can still go to groceries so i did a lot of groceries and i did a lot of cleaning materials you know i, I even sell mops you know like things that's like i guess i'll sell anything <laughs> yeah so i go to an aisle now just you know like what else can i sell you know i sell some spices i sell some yeah whatever i i'll go grocery and cleaning materials that was my my bread and butter during the height of covid Right. Now, did you, were you ungated in groceries or did you need to get ungated or how'd you go I about need that? I ungated, but there are things that, actually, my experience, uh, groceries are um, one of the easiest to get ungated. But if you, you know, because I started also that everything is gated, just sell things that you, that you can sell yeah so yeah so focus on that otherwise you get frustrated and and then yeah. you get stopped, you know right yeah that makes sense because that's you know that's kind of what i've been telling people but it's good to hear from your mouth you know yeah. say hey yeah i get it like you know i felt like i couldn't you know couldn't sell anything but you know so like did you did you go through a lot of items to finally find the items that you found were working or is it more like did you did you just realize hey maybe i should just get ungated and that helped you or yeah because every time every time i search for something then i cannot sell it you know and then uh, when covid hit then i thought okay nobody can go out so i just sell stuff that i can sell from a grocery and yeah i started with spices that I can sell and yeah and then I eventually get ungated on um, groceries and I'm selling groceries man it's like yes <laughs> selling cereal I'm selling, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah grocery items <laughs> you know I have a question for you so like you know I get a lot of students who you know they just don't do that great right you know mm -hmm. they're they're stuck at a certain level or whatever then I have students like you who reach the 30K club and are looking to do bigger and better things. What, what do you think the difference is? Why do you think that you succeeded and why other people may struggle and not really succeed? I think the first thing is you have to be clear on your why. Why are you doing this? I mean, I'm clear on my why because I have no plan B. So th this is it. This is it for me. I have to, I have to do really well. And also, we just have to, you know, define what you really want. Because you can't have, you can't make 30 straight away. So you have to start with 1,000 and then 5,000. And, you know, step by step. I mean, I, as a teacher, that's what we do with, especially, especially I'm special ed, you know, you you don't compare the child to the no, the majority you have to give a child what can the child do then you have to go step by step because otherwise you're going to get frustrated and then you just you know wake up one day you know every day you wake up and you do something towards that goal and then for all you know you know <laughs> 
you're gonna get there <laughs> i mean i'm still not there i'm still you know but i'm i must say i'm i'm enjoying my time with amazon yeah i, I sound advice you know you said know your why huh know your why yeah absolutely you know i i totally 100 percent agree with that you also said you have to know your what what do you want yeah yeah and you know uh it sounds like to me like you know your why is hey i've got no plan b so i must make this work yes. right yes. i must make this work yes. and see and some I'll people i guess sometimes people have like an option you know and you know they, they could not make this work it's okay i can just fall back in this other thing exactly. but not you right yeah and you know sometimes we get attracted to a shiny object yes. there's so many shiny objects you yes. know and you know maybe i'm gonna do this maybe get, and just just go and focus on this focus on one and then and then we'll see you know and then once you make that sale and then you go to the next level what's the next level it doesn't have to be the 30k you know maybe you make 100 and then next time you know 500 and you know step by step and then celebrate celebrate like each milestone those are milestones you know yeah absolutely that's sound advice for sure celebrating the milestones yeah mm -hmm. yeah and you know it's inevitable for us to fail as an entrepreneur we fail but you just have to fail fast <laughs> oh i love that, fail I love fast. that. <laughs> and get yes. out and get moving <laughs> oh yeah no absolutely i to i totally agree with that yeah you know and i think that to a degree you know we're afraid of failure right um, yeah. uh for whatever reason but you know what, what you're talking about here is is basically pushing past that and saying okay yeah. I, you know we're all maybe a little bit afraid of failure but you know yeah. it's it's a necessary part of your growth right yeah yeah it is absolutely yeah. and then and then you change as well you know it's yeah. like there's so many there's hundreds of things happening in my life right now and i'm doing good with my sales and and all that and then there's one customer that will piss you you know like yeah. am i gonna focus on this one or or the 98 things that are doing well you know so give and take yeah also sound advice yeah like <laughs> what you focus on right yeah and yeah. you know it's true i mean you know the students i've seen who you know don't do well their focus on tends to be on what went wrong all the things that did go wrong versus all the things that did go right yes and yeah. i think mentally it gets exhausting to look at anything and look at all the things that went wrong and feel bad about it and continue yeah. to work on that and build that thing you know yeah. it's like two contradictory messages going on this yeah. sucks I, sh I can't wait to get started and build this thing huge. You know, they're yeah. not going to go together. Yeah. You're not going to get there from socks to, you know, doing good. So you have to enjoy what you have and re like you enjoy what's going on, you know, and scale and then, you know, let's do it. Let's do it and then do it to an another level and another level you know every day is another level <laughs> sometimes yeah. you go back and like oh my god what you know why did this happen so so those things you have to look at the bad and reflect what happened you know it's like oh i lost this money but you know you have to get past that and there's more money over there there's more money <laughs> it's gonna come back <laughs> yeah yeah and uh you know when you're talking about the the steps you know um you know get to your first hundred dollars and get to your first 500 and celebrating that you yeah. know it's a way that you can uh focus on the good stuff and and celebrate that and just feel good about where you are but know that there's another level which there always is for everybody is, yeah yeah that's great sound advice tessa sound advice
<laughs> Just gonna see if there's any uh, last questions here. Um, do you have anything else you want to add? Me? Yeah. Oh, I thought you're you're asking a question. Uh, do I have anything? Else? Okay, so maybe I could say you know don't give up because now that you know i don't know what you've done to you you've taken a step like bought a bought a course study them and all this you know you've done a lot of things so when you stop you have to go back again you know like okay all the way from the beginning and you know sometimes we are not on our a game that's okay, you know, acknowledge that, like, okay, I actually want to take a nap because I slept, like, two o'clock every day, so I'll take a nap, that's fine, too, you know, acknowledge what your body needs, and, but you have to keep moving, you know, you can't, you can't stay in one place, you have to keep moving, yeah. Solid, yeah, yeah, no, that's well said. And I appreciate that coming from you. Yeah, for sure. Um, never give up, right? Never give up. Yeah, never give up. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's, it's frustrating. Can be frustrating, but, you know, it's change your mood. Change your mood. You know, that it's okay to sulk a little bit, but, you know, don't stay a long time in that energy have to bounce back and, you know, get your horse moving. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the thing that uh, resonated with me with what you just said is the energy, because it really is an energy thing, isn't it? Like, yeah. your business is an energy, basically, exactly. yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, the energy that's put in basically determines the energy that's put out I guess yeah yeah absolutely and I you know I'm I'm Asian so we you know I I pray all the time so I when I'm paying for my stuff you know I'm praying I'm praying like oh my gosh yes you know bless my money <laughs> yeah I'm praying all the time and yeah and you know, whatever it is that works for you. If you're not a believer, whatever. So yeah. you can praise the universe. Oh, thank yes. you for the money, you know? Yeah. Or praise whoever, your grandmother, you know, something. Yeah, I really, really appreciate you sharing what you're sharing there because, see, we're getting to kind of see what's going on behind the business, right? A lot of times we'll see, like, from somebody, they'll say, oh, yeah, I bought this and I sold this, right? That's like the mechanics of the business. Yes. But what what goes on behind the business, right? Like who's actually, you know, what is the, the mental attitude and perspective mm -hmm. of the person who's actually running it? Because yeah. that's what makes a difference as far as the actual business goes. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing from you, like some things that you're saying, you know, there's a spiritual aspect to mm -hmm. your business that you add to, you know, mm -hmm. that helps you in life, which then again helps, is obviously going to help your business, right? Yeah. Yeah. And don't make it for me, you know, like I made peace with this because I'm very motivated and, you know, like, okay, I'm going to go and run this, you know, like, and then now I just say, you know what, I know my goals. I'm going to get there. Yes. You know, I don't have to keep pushing and pushing, you know, and then when you're actually in more relaxed situation. Yes. Mood is more relaxed, then you you can see the world around you. You start to make relationship with the people, like the sales lady at this place. You know, then you start chatting with the person, like, hey, what you know, what day is your uh, inventory coming? Ah, oh, every Monday. Okay, so by Wednesday you have put it all out. Yeah, okay, can you give me a call if, you know, you can kind of, but then if you make it like a, a mission, like, I'm going to go there, you know, it's like, it's, it's, enjoy the journey. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Again, that was really solid what you're saying there. So first off, there was like a self-awareness I was hearing in what you're saying. When you realize there's like that that pushing yourself to forcing it to happen, and then you just say, ooh. You get exhausted. Yeah, and you're self-aware enough to see that and say, wait a sec, no. You know? And then and then uh, you, you take – and that inspired idea comes to you because you're more relaxed, right? Yeah. And then you can, you can see around you. It's like, uh, you know, and then you become friends with the manager. Yeah. You know, and the sales lady that's taking care, you know, the cashier. And yes. then suddenly you have their number. And, you know, like, oh, do you mind if I call you on Wednesday before coming here? You know, and yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's like it's like before, like it, it. It seems like the focus is like this, right? Yeah, exactly. And and you can't see anything else when you're when you're just getting that drive push phase. Like it has its place. Don't get me wrong, but it it sometimes can be like this. But then when you stopped, then you could suddenly see things that you couldn't have seen before because you were relaxed. Yeah. And then you were the energy shifted a little bit, so you started like almost like giving you know, towards, you know, the manager and the employee and stuff like yeah. that. And then new opportunities came available to you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it doesn't cost anything. It's just a little bit of time, you know, to build relationship with whoever is in yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I, I tell people a lot. I say relationships are huge in this business. Uh, because like one good relationship can open up like a whole bunch of opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You found that to be true? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. Sometimes we're so driven that we we miss the <laughs> we miss the journey. You know, it's like it's all about the destination. No, it's it's the journey counts too. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And it's important to enjoy the journey, isn't it? Yeah, enjoying the journey. <laughs> awesome. Tessa, this has been a great conversation. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming out and uh, and sharing about this Merchant Fulfilled and just yeah. your, your experience, how you got to the 30K Club, all that. Yeah. Yeah. You Merchant Fulfilled guys, you make more money. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Merchant fulfilled. Okay. Got it.